Hello, this is Trent. I am Bumi Obanao. Moses Amogena, as usual, is right here with me to ensure that your online responses do not go unnoticed. So, rest assured, we've got you covered. But first, let's find out what's trending. Yes, and welcome to Trends once again. And this is a very, particularly a very special episode because really? it's the 50th episode of the Trends. I know, right? 50, man. 50, yeah. We've been we're doing old, this like forever. We're old. <laughs> Golden Jubilee, we're fear now. <laughs> so are we like popping champagne and having cake? How are we um, celebrating? Mm. We should tell the producers. I hope they can hear me. I'm sure they can. <laughs> anyway, so what's trending? Yeah, social media has been, you know, buzzing with a lot of controversies lately. I mean, particularly coming from Africa, you know, with issues of insurgency to, to um, national government um, issues. You know, rivalries here and there. Someone is saying something, someone is replying and stuff like that. But of course, the two things that really caught our eye is first, um, Valentine. Yes, it's mm. a season of love, in it? So, um, Valentine and AFCON. But I'm going to start with the AFCON now. Of course, we know that um, on Sunday night, um, um, Ivory Coast, you know, um, went home victorious with a very dramatic win yeah, in 1998 <laughs> dramatic win over Ghana after penalty shootout. Now it's dramatic in the sense that the AFCON generally is dramatic because two uh, major things according to the BBC made it very dramatic. First of all where they had Equatorial Guinea had barely just two months to prepare for the you know the AFCON. Kudos to them by the way. Um, after Morocco of course uh, bailed out due to the Ebola scare. Now secondly Equatorial Guinea changed their coach <laughs> just before the semi-finals. I mean, who does that? And the Equatorial coaching, Guinea. yeah, Argentina's um, Esteban Becker, who in turn changed about a third of his team. <laughs> to, you know, to just feel they live in the moment. Exactly. They just do it. I mean, come on. Like, be, uh, a lot of stakeholders are wondering, like, why would you do that? Really, like, just to semi-finals. If they had won the tournament, maybe it would have made sense. But now people yeah, are we'll be saying, celebrating and say, well, in that spite was a of all the change and all the decisions <laughs> being made, nothing. I mean, you didn't go home with the cup. Now, next is uh, Valentine. Hmm. February 14th. A lot of people are asking, who shall be my Val? Do you have one, by the way? My lips are sealed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I never have a Val. Why? Because Aww. 14th happens to be my mother's birthday. And I have a very jealous mother. So she so wants to say also herself. Exactly. <laughs> so she doesn't want to hear that one girl from somewhere is taking oh, her space. Six. You just don't want to buy any girl a gift. <laughs> don't, don't listen to Moses. <laughs> He's just being yeah, very... So who's going to be my vow? Well, I guess maybe this time around there might be some slight changes. You never Ooh, know. <laughs> we'll be watching. So it's the hashtag Valentine and hashtag Afcon. Afcon. Now, one thing that we also want to raise awareness to is a TVC's a Neighborhood Watch. We know that a new app, TVC has launched a new app where people can, you know, upload videos and pictures, um, yeah, and send strictly to uh, TVC News Africa. Uh, basically, all you have to do is to download the app. When you download the app, you will see an icon by the right-hand corner called Neighborhood Watch. You click on it, it gives you the option of uploading photos or videos, and then you choose whichever one you want to upload. And of course, you see, you, 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 you send away your data, your email, your first name, your surname, and of course, a, a brief description of whatever you're sending. And of course, you, su you submit. It's easy like that. All you have to do is download the TVC app and it's self-explanatory um, self after yeah. that. So like, citizens get to report, they get to do our job for us. I don't <laughs> want to call it our report, but it's something like that. No, in it the moment, like tell us what you CNN. can see and mm. what, you, what you're experiencing. Exactly. So it's a and great it will way come for you in to very handy too, you know, for the elections, where people at various points across you know, um, geopolitical zones, polling units can you know, tell us what's going on really, because really we, we can't be everywhere at the same time. So they can you know, get involved in the process of you know, citizen journalism and you know, help us tell the stories, uh, Nigerian and African stories better. With proof. Yeah, of course, with proof. Oh, Seeing right. is believing. That's, uh, I believe in that completely. Yes. And remember that you can join the conversation by sharing your views with us via Twitter at TVC Trends. Comment on our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash TVC Trends, and send your pictures and video comments to the trends at tvcnews.tv. <clears throat> now, moving on to today's topic. So, Nigerians will now have to wait for six more weeks to elect a new leader. 
This is as a result of the postponement of the much anticipated February 14 general election to March 28. Now, the delay has been attributed to security challenges that some parts of the country might face if the election was held as planned. Nevertheless, majority of Nigerians and some international agencies have expressed their disappointment on social media as regards this announcement made by the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Professor Atahiru Jega, on Saturday. Today on the program, we'll be discussing criticism and concerns as regards the postponement of the election. I'm sure you have a lot to say regarding that. But before we begin, let's take a look at this. Your Weeks after anxiety, allegation and counter allegation, the nation's electoral body emerged from consultative meetings with stakeholders in Abuja with a decision to postpone the 2015 general elections by six weeks, citing security reasons. No matter the extent of INEC's preparedness, therefore, if the security of personnel, voters, election observers and election materials cannot be guaranteed. The life of innocent young men and women, as well as prospects for free, fair, credible and peaceful elections will be greatly jeopardized. A civil society group called the Transition Resurgent Group is calling for the resignation and prosecution of Professor Atayu Jega. They also accused him of bias in the distribution of the permanent voter cards. Allegations by eminent people like Bala Bremusa, who is neither PDP nor APC, and allegations by the Southern People's Assembly. Those allegations with all the evidences backing them, if they are not cleared, I do not see how we can have confidence in Jega to give us a free and fair elections. We believe that a man should be given a fair hearing. That's why we're asking the President of Police to cause an investigation immediately into those allegations. If the guy comes out clean of those allegations, then you can now say, okay, how do you address the mess you have created? But if you can, if you cannot clear those allegations, he has no moral basis to conduct his elections. With a six weeks extension, the ruling party and the opposition group will certainly intensify their bids to woo more Nigerians ahead of a fierce presidential contest now slated for March 28th. Welcome back. Well, that has given you a pretty good idea of what is going on right now. The reasons or the reasons that have been given behind the postponement and basically how a few people, quite a lot of people actually, have been responding to those reasons. But what do you think, Moses? I know you were all geared up, or maybe not, but you seem to be all prepared for the election, right? You were going to vote. I was prepared professional-wise. I was prepared, prepared as a journalist to cover it. <laughs> but, of course, you know, there are various forms of preparation here. But what I want to say is that Jaga right now is one of the most hated people in Nigeria. But uh, he? stakeholders say that there's more that meets the eye. So let's um, leave judgment aside and let's uh, dissect you know, yeah, the issues and the reasons behind. We can. Yeah, exactly. And joining us to do just justice to that is in the studio we have social commentators Kayode Ogundamisi, you probably remember him, and Buki Shoni Barre, who will be joining us for the first time as a part of the show in the studio. <laughs> yeah. It's great to have you, finally you. have you finally. live here <laughs> and not via Skype. But don't worry, Jafet Omojoa is joining us via Skype, and we love to have him via Skype as well. So, Jafet, lovely to have you join us. Okay, so let me just start off. There were rumors. So not, not everybody can say this came as a surprise. There were already rumors you know, going about, about a likelihood of some sort of postponement. But still, when this announcement was made, how did you feel? Let me start with Bookie Ladies first. Um, I felt very, very disappointed. You know, um, as a Nigerian, I felt it's just a huge slap on my Nigerianness that we've had six years to prepare for this particular elections and days to the election we are announcing a, a postponement. What gave me that going light that something was going to happen was when some bunch of guys in Nigeria were carrying placards to say we want election postponement. So, so the question for me was 
what did they put together? What metrics did they put together to say, okay, you know what? I think we have a sensible, um, sensible claim to Postponed. demand for, you know, election postponement. Postponed. Okay. You know, so, so for me, disappointment just explains it. All right. Um, Kaede, before you answer, now, Buki said they had six years to prepare. But in fairness, a lot of new um, challenges erupted during all those periods. And mm. each day we still see these things. So certainly six years, but different terrain, different situations presented itself. And they are not saying... They're saying they're basing their claim. Now, INEC has remained adamant of its readiness. So they're saying, well, we are ready. However, we cannot dismiss the concerns of our security agencies. Now, in your humble opinion, do you buy that? Well, two things here. The first thing is, I don't know if anyone remembers a country called Afghanistan, and there's another one called Iraq, and there's another one called Pakistan. The violence that goes on in those countries are just unimaginable. But guess what? They hold elections. It's the most fundamental rights of the citizens to have a voice to change government on time, uh, as announced within specific, specific periods, because a lot of plannings are put into this. It's not just about some emperor sitting down in his palace and saying, OK, you know, this will not favor me, so let's uh, jiggle a bit for another six weeks and see if we can turn the, the table. What has happened clearly is a coup just took place. Uh, it's not clear who plotted the coup, if it was the president himself or the service chiefs, but what has happened is that a gun literally was pointed at the chairman of the Inde Independent National Le Electoral Commission. And when this government is kicked out, there must be a proper investigation, and whoever plotted that coup must be brought to justice. Now, those are but certainly strong claims. Yeah. If I'm, if I'm to come in here now, I mean, a lot of people have tagged the postponement as democracy postponed or democracy, you know, delayed. Do you think that a postponement, or maybe I should, maybe, maybe I should bring in Omojiwa into this. Definitely. Uh, Omojiwa, if you can hear me, now the postponement, a lot of people say that the postponement means democracy, you know, uh, delayed. But do you think that a postponement will necessarily have adverse effect on fairness and credibility of the election? Of course it does. Um, Why so? The election, yeah, because does does the postponement affect at least one of? Hello? Does the postponement affect at least one of the major political parties? Yes. If the incumbent political party, the PDP, was assured was part of winning the elections on the 14th of February, would they have postponed? Of course, no. Have well, we don't know that for certain, do we? Where the incumbent president postponed the elections when he knew he was going to lose, not, not a single one. So we cannot even afford to start pretending that the postponement does not affect, in this case, obviously, the APC. Uh, but the thing is, everybody has to get up. If you really do want this change, then six weeks is not too much. Mandela's people, Mandela himself waited for 27 years for freedom. His people waited for over 100 years to get their freedom. And even today, they still fight for that freedom. And those that want the current administration to continue, again, they have si just six weeks to to go vote. So it is what it is. We can't change it anymore. Let's just focus on what we can do. OK, now one thing is, this is not the first time elections have been delayed. Even in 2011, they were delayed for about a week because of insufficient materials and all of that. So in a way, this is, we won't call that a postponement, but it, w it was sort of postponed for about you know a few more days, even though it had started in some places. So they had reasons then. and. Now, I know you've mentioned Afghanistan, you've mentioned Iraq, but if we study these different countries, we, they probably have different kind of defense system put up. So who knows, maybe the military, the security agencies have sat down and said, you know what, we cannot secure the safety of these people. Let's give us six weeks. Let's see what we can do. Because in all fairness, everyone has a right to vote right. and have a right, Bookie, you know, the ability. Like, they should be given the ability to I'm vote. Let's hear. You know, I, you don't agree. Well, okay. I what do totally, you? totally disagree. <laughs> if we have been in a war situation, because what's happening in the Northeast is mm. not different from a war situation. If we've had this for over six years, mm. we've had insurgency for over six years. And we've been tackling it in one way or the other, shamefully so, because we've not won the war, you know, the counterinsurgency mm -hmm. war. We've, we've had this for so long. So how come we suddenly woke up and we thought, so some military guys, you know, using your analogy, 
sat down and said that, okay, you know what, based on these parameters, they will not be able to secure elections. For me, it is, it is shameful on that our military apparatus that for six years we've had this conversation on our counterinsurgency war. And now that we have elections, you now suddenly think that what you were unable to achieve in six years, then you can suddenly achieve it in six weeks. So the question we should be asking ourselves here is one, what are we going to do differently that wasn't done in six years? Okay, let me give an example. Okay. Well, it's not an example, it's actually a fact. Could it be already the AU, you know, have signed this pact and they are sending about 8,700 8, strong forces. Of course, Nigeria um, security people would be part of it. And then other neighboring countries finally have come together to assist. So could this be part of the factors they have put in place to say, you know what, now that we have the additional help, I mm. am not a security expert, we, but they have put together we, the plan know, and said, know, you, maybe this will help you us. You know what we love doing in this country? We love yeah. calling tomato mango. Thank you. you. Know, just to, uh, and it's, it's quite sad. Uh, the, I hope the International Criminal Court are actually looking at the leadership in Nigeria so that there will be proper indictment served on the leaders in Nigeria because for more than six years, I keep repeating this, 1.5 million Nigerians are internally are displaced, both internally and externally. And you have 35,000 Nigerians literally massacred. That is 35,000 families. You know, uh, if you go to Abuja, you see some households taking people from Borno, from Guaza, some families. And then, so it means for six years, you had a strategy to actually uh, wipe out Boko Haram, and you, you, di you did nothing. Uh, uh, same people will be asking, that is that not connivance with the terrorists to actually let them go on killing people and then suddenly six so you mentioned AU. Nigerian armed forces, we have about 160,000 or more, I stand to be corre corrected, soldiers spread across the country. The AU is going to give us 7,500 soldiers. Out of the 7,500, we're, we're going to contribute 3,500. So we have, um, we, 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 we actually had 35,000 Nigerian soldiers in the last six years. So what 35,000 Nigerian soldiers could not do in six years, suddenly, magically, we're going to do in six weeks. These are serious issues that affect our country, and I hope that at some point, the president and commander-in-chief, the opposition parties will sit down, lock themselves up, and look at, the, look at each other straight in the eye and say, is it really worth politicking with the lives of ordinary Nigerians? Look at the case of the missing girls. So it means that suddenly we, we discover there's a place called Sambisa Forest, and we are now ready to go into those areas. This postponement is about politicking, not about any let, security Let me take issues. it off from where Kayode stopped. With, okay, we, we heard that just before the announcement of the postponement and all of that, we heard our military went straight into Sambisa Forest. And then there was, you know, they, there was a massive attack on mm -hmm. Sambisa Forest. One of the reasons, I'm a key member in the Bring Back Our Girls campaign, and when we engage some of these stakeholders, especially our sec security apparatus, one of the things they said to us is that they cannot go into Sambisa Forest because doing so will mean, you know, risking the lives of yes, not yes. just the Chibo girls, but every other abductees that have been there before the abduction of, before the Chibo girls, and even after the Chibo girls. So what happened? All of a sudden, we felt, okay, it's okay for us to go into Sambisa Forest and launch an attack on Sambisa Forest. If anything has changed, there should be proper communication. Why are we not listening? Why are we not hearing? Or why are we not getting information as to? We're not saying that they should divulge sensitive security details. What we are simply saying is, if you're changing a strategy which you openly came out to announce that you were not going to do, so does this mean that Somebody will wake up someday and say, because of that attack we had in Sambisa Forest, all the Chibok girls are dead. So, so it's, it's, it's only sensible for us to know exactly what is going on. And just okay. like what Kayode <coughs> said, if the truth is not being laid on the table, we we'll keep going around these circles and we we'll keep having this sabotaging of, of um, electoral process. There are certainly loads of questions and very few answers. But let's see what the online community has to say yes. before we continue. Um, the very first tweet comes from um, at teaser Tom 20 it says that the colossal effect of this election postponement will set in by the dawn of the day when we count our loss or gain. And um, at Shegun Sopiton says, um, all this talk of election postponement is ridiculous. I don't understand why Nigerians are even entertaining such senseless arguments. <laughs> and um, at um, FG Ward says, election postponement, absolutely not. It's a shame orchestrated by the ruling party. And um, at skills underscore, YBR 
YBRL says, just know that whatever happens, we have decided and six weeks is too short to earn new redemption. Hashtag election postponement. Um, at Rehan, Jaina says, so is the election postponement because of securing the North or because of INEX supposed unpreparedness? Hashtag Nigeria decides. Now, I want to raise this question. Now, a lot of um, uh, stakeholders and social critics have argued that the postponement of the election is not necessarily coming from INEC, but from the federal government. Now, we know that when it comes to election matters, INEC should autonomously make decisions. Mm -hmm. Now, if this is true, do you think or see this as a breach of constitutional practice? I know Omojoa is on, so let's address that to him. All right. Because we seem to have about it. So, Omojoa, did you, did you hear Moses? I heard the question. It's okay. obviously, so you cannot call it a breach of uh, constitutional process because it was not done directly. Obviously, the first person that publicly spoke about postponement was the National Security Advisor. That's the NSA. And don't mm -hmm. forget that the NSA is directly under the presidency. Mm -hmm. And the NSA has been directly involved in this orchestrated postponement. This postponement was orchestrated for the benefit of the president. Whoever doubts that might as well doubt he is our own existence. But the thing is, the president has not done this directly. He has done it through the right channels. You know, security chiefs, um, INEC, through Professor Jagad, the chairman, announced it. So no, con the constitution has not been breached in any way. That was why even the United States, through um, Secretary of State John Kerry, when we were making their comments, they spoke about political interference. They knew what they were saying, but they obviously were not mentioning the name of the president and all that. But political interference essentially boils down to the fact that what happened was not a regular, um, normal process. But okay. it also has to be said that no, no part of the Constitution has been breached. But obviously, some issues of morality, some issues of political interference, which benefited definitely the president was in place. Now, we all seem to believe that the president is going to benefit one way or the other from it. However, their media, their media PR person, Fanny Kaede, has come out to talk about how they are also disappointed about the postponements, but you know they have to. <laughs> you are laughing, <laughs> okay? But they have to respect the wishes and, of course, you know the expertise of the security. Um, um, what you are, your experts. laughter speaks volumes. Well, irrespective, <laughs> that's what he has said. Now, bearing that in mind, and you're talking about political interference, already the news going round town, and from we've learned to believe that sometimes rumors might actually be fact. Now we hear that the president of the INEC right now, the chairman rather, Jega, might be leaving. Now if this happens, just what impact do you think it will have on the election? If he leaves, they say March 1st, and he'll be replaced by some other person. Now if this happens, what impact do you think it will have on the incoming election? Let me tell you something. Our democracy is threatened right now. The fact that there's much more uncertainty about this democratic process than certainty just tells you something. This political process is too fluid, it's too risky, it is threatened. The fact that we're even discussing whether the chairman of INEC, Professor Jaga, is going to be the one to oversee this process amounts to a sort of disaster already. The fact that Nigerians cannot even absolutely say that by the 28th of March 2015, the presidential elections will hold, it's a big issue. And let no one be confused or deceived about this. This is not just about Nigeria anymore. If we mess up this democratic process, whoever thinks that it would lead Nigeria through the back door must, uh, has, has the international community to deal with sanctions and all of those things. And with already our economy crashing and being messed up, the, the Naira today, for the first time ever, officially crossed 200 Naira to a dollar. With all of these tensions and everything, the least we can do is to let this democratic process take its rightful course. The rumors being thrown around about the removal of Professor Jaga has started exactly the same way the postponement started. They threw it into the public. They made the public discuss it. They made it look like a rumor. They tested the waters, and eventually it landed, bam, they postponed. This time around, it's Professor Jaga. People are spending a lot of money putting adverts in newspapers from tomorrow, next tomorrow, or thereabouts. You start seeing people gathering together to protest his removal. But let's not deceive ourselves. Any form of removal of the chairman of INEC, whether directly or indirectly, whether through a gunshot or through a form of accident, whether through whatever, anything that makes him not to oversee this democratic process to the end will be the final nail of this so-called democratic process. And after that, 
anything is possible. Although um, the but, spokesperson uh, of uh, uh, INEC has in fact come out to debunk that mm -hmm. uh, rumor that um, it's not true that mm -hmm. Jaga is, the postponement. Yeah, they that Jaga the is definitely postponement. going to um, you know, um, stay till his tenure elapses on the 30th of June. So um, let's, let's treat it that way, let's see it as a rumor that it, that it is or an yes, unconfirmed certainly. report. And we'll keep watching. <laughs> now, with all that has been said, March 28th comes up and the election doesn't hold. <laughs> Well, um, you see, I, 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 I say to people, look, anything and everything is possible in Nigeria. Uh, for those who think elections will hold on the 28th of March 2008, they should prepare for two things. The first thing is to prepare about getting their PVC and going to vote. The other thing is they should get enough food and stockpile, stockpile enough materials at home that will last as long as six months because... Um, uh, let, let me tell you what is happening. The thinking was that if they, if they move this election by six weeks, there's going to be a violent reaction from a part of the country. Because in 2011, they witnessed uh, a sort of people, uh, people reaction to the rigging of election in certain areas. So the prediction was like, look, when we do this, there will be a violent reaction. Section then, the, the, then they will now invoke section 125. We will, will now have sort of a state of emergency. Mm -hmm. And this, uh, the, the president of the country will now have an have opportunity to, to sit him. for another two years, the same yeah. seven years single Six time months. he's been campaigning for. And another danger is the fact that, look, if by March 28th this election does not hold, we would have a lapse, more or less, in a matter of weeks, a Jagas time of office is going to uh, go away. Look, we should prepare for two things, prepare for election and prepare for a revolution. The Burkina Faso treatment would have to be meted on whoever is responsible to Scotland this a democratic process. Because when people were marching on the streets, the Jonathans of this world were on the other side, comfortable with military dictatorship. So we cannot allow this democratic process to be flung by the ambition of one man or people who are holding one man as a prisoner within the confines of the presidency. You know? So we need to be very careful. Another thing I also want to mention is that, look, Nigeria seems to be um, happy that, look, in Lagos, we can, I keep repeating this, we can dance and have fun. We are safe. We are safe. You know, there is a sense of security there. If northern Nigeria is an independent country today and they have a national boundary, whatever negative effect that is happening within the north would affect us economically. Not to say a country that is a part of the country that is part of and Nigeria, we're all the same country, that we need to take seriously the rights, the democratic rights of the people of Nigeria from across Nigeria to choose a leader. And whoever is president should know they have four years. Thank you very much. Your time has, uh, has come. Thanks for what you've done right. Okay. And the things you've not done right, it's time to change. Now, Buki, right. some people fear that, because I was reading up, and some people fear that even if the election does hold, now some people fear that the opposition now, be it the APC or we have several, so it's, it's not a two-party system, mm -hmm. even though sometimes it seems like it is. They fear that they would not accept it. So there's fear of civilian or military coup coming up. Do you think this is possible? Anything, like Kayode said, like anything, <laughs> anything right now is possible. But, but what do you think? What's your honest opinion? My honest opinion is just I would align myself with Kayode, just like what Kayode has said. Anything is possible. And, you know, let me go back to what um, J um, Jaffet was saying. If we look at the trend, how the federal government gets things done in Nigeria, you can almost, you know, pick a situation and pick like four or five, put them together, juxtapose them, and you can come up with a perfect trend of how things are done here in Nigeria. So number one is somebody wakes up and then like four or five hungry people come together and they, you know, go and carry placard and call for election postponement. And then after that, it, you begin to see a lot of um, opinion ads, you know, in the newspaper, you know, and then you begin to see it on social media. So they, they sell it into the social media. And then we begin to argue among ourselves. So, so APC, PDP guys, they begin to throw banters and they begin to use the narrative that they are formed back end to argue and you know carry out the conversation that happens on social media and off social media and what that does is to say that well we have informed you in one way or the other that this is what we are going to do so you knew already anyway. so you knew already so so whether you are for it or against it and, and, and i can tell you that this federal government and shamefully so seems to have 
they now know our mumu button, you know, for lack mm. of a better word. Where you know that, okay, Nigerians will come, we will cry about it, mm. we will shout. The worst that will happen is we will carry placards. And, and I'm, I, I must really commend Nigerians at this point that we didn't come out and we, we didn't do all those civil disobedience. Because if we had done that, they would have invoked the constitution, extended, they would have said we are in a state of war, invoke the constitution, extend, you know, this administration by six months, and, by an, and the constitution permits that. You understand? So, okay. so for um, me, I believe that is a trend. And the fact that it has happened consistently and successfully so, it is the same card that they are now playing. So okay. I'm not surprised. On that note, I'll call on a short break. But when we come back, we'll continue with our discussion. So don't go anywhere. Welcome back. You're still watching Trends. And we have been looking at the issues surrounding the postponement of the supposedly February 14 election. Still joining us, we have in the studio um, Kaya De Ogunamisi. He's still here. And Buki Shunibare. And via Skype, we still have Jafet and Omojoa. So it's still... We still have our team and we're still talking. Now, before we went on the break, you were talking about the influence social media now has and how it is being used as a tool, either way, by whatever party, to swing people's opinion and yeah, influence, you know, in, yeah, and just influence the entire atmosphere. Now, let's look at that. Let's just for a, a brief um, sec, let's look at that influence and how dangerous it can be in the hands of the wrong person. You are, the, I call you the oh, social media man. <laughs> <laughs> You're the social media man. So what, 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 what do you think? How come they have been so successful? If they have been so successful? I think it's uh, the, the people are taking back the power that has been uh, mismanaged by big money bags who, who will steal money from our taxpayers and then take control of the narrative. And young people, young and old, now have access to mobile devices. They can report news themselves. And um, it's, it's got a positive influence. Well, of course, it's also creating employment for uh, politicians who will pick on one or two people, give them money to uh, churn out uh, uh, negative narratives, um, tell lies about the situation in the country. But otherwise, I also think that we need to de-emphasize and look at the street. People need to also in interpret this, what goes on in social media on the street. And kudos to people like Bring Back Our Girls that consistently there's a group of people who protest on daily basis about the Shibok girls. And constantly you have people who, during the immigration crisis uh, uh, scandal, people marched on the street. They took it out of the social media. So there's a need to actually link the social media to the street. And that would uh, uh, go well, better for us. I'd like to comment, comment on that. that okay. um, it's to say that um, we cannot deny the fact that, you know, for people like um, Kayo the Jaffet, who have huge followership. We can't deny the fact that um, um, social media has now become you know, a force as it relates to shaping opinion, as it relates to um, um, having conversation on issues around elections and any issue for that matter. So, so when somebody you know, wakes up and then fats, it comes on social media and then they begin to talk about it. Mm -hmm. So we, we talk about romance, elections, family, everything, you know. However, we, we, especially for those of us who are active on social media, we need to begin to look at social media as now an avenue for us to shape the narrative in such a way that it becomes beneficial to our democracy. Because just like what Jaffet said, our democracy is at the point where if we are not careful, we are nose diving. You know, we're actually nose diving. And before it falls to the ground and it, it breaks off and we cannot put the pieces together, we as opinion shapers, you know, the opinions that we shape go out there, you know, they become narratives and then they become what we eventually see. That's the situation. Okay. So it's important for us to be constructive in our engagement. We cannot deny the fact that there are people who are paid on social media to shape narrative in a particular direction, whether it is beneficial to our democracy or not. There are people who are paid, you know, for, for this. We cannot pinpoint them, but we know them. However, for instance, some days ago, I was looking at argument between a, a senior special assistant and, you know, a youth leader. And it was shameful for me as a Nigerian to see that these are public officials. I, um, what's it called? Um, um, Don Yokupe tweeted at me some, some, some days ago and he said, oh, you bring back our girls, people. You people are godless, evil, and heartless. And, and 
You know, my response to him was, you are a public officer, mm. sir. You cannot engage a citizen in this manner. So okay. let's put that aside. So we must see social media as an avenue for us to have constructive engagement and shape the narrative in the way that will be beneficial okay. to our democracy. All right. Now, while I don't want to take us back, but Jafet, we cannot make light of the concerns that INEC did raise. Now, aside the security concerns, there were also concerns of, you know, the availability of PVCs, or should I say availability or accessibility of PVCs by some people. Now, that also affects people's ability to vote. And people say we should take that seriously. So what do you think now? If people do not have their PVCs, they cannot vote. And in some ways, their rights have been impeded. So that is something to consider, don't you think? So look, like I said, the elections, have, the elections have been postponed. There is no use crying for that anymore. What we should look at is, so for those that haven't collected their, their PVC, now they have almost so to, to collect their PVCs. For those that need to travel to do all that, they have, they have more than enough time. Again, there is no justification for the postponement. It has to be said. But look, if you need an, if you need an excuse not to to do anything whatsoever, you would always find one. And do not forget that the excuse that was initially given about this postponement by the, the National Security Advisor uh, in, in London was PVC distribution. And then eventually it became security. And then eventually it became any way, anyhow, make sharp postpone this thing because we never ready. But look, it's gone. Now people have to go and get their PVCs. INEC has at least five weeks to better organize the so-called security measures that they have to put in place, they have at least five weeks to put them in place. Um, and of course, let's be glad that finally uh, we're going to defeat Boko Haram by, by March. Let me ask you this, Omojua. Do you really think that a fresh government, you know, let's assume, I mean, after the elections, now a fresh government comes into power, do you really think that will be or put an end to the insurgency? Or we're just going to be back to the see, status quo? See, there are no guarantees. But there are two things. First of all, if we continue with what we have, then we already know what we've had over the last five years. This government came in May 2010. Then we already know what we've had over the last five years, inability to defeat insurgency, treating it like it's, it's a problem for the Northeast, and then they might as well just you know, die. Um, a, a, a very, very poor economic management system, um, corruption, you know, all these things that we already experienced. And I just told you, those that are earning 18,000 Naira, for instance, as minimum wage, their, their real take home is no longer 18,000 Naira. According to Naira, Naira dollar exchange rates, their, the real value of that 18,000 is about 12,000 Naira now. Okay. All right. Um, if, we continue, uh, if we don't continue, if we bring in a new government, of course, two things are possible. Either the new government goes the same way this old government is, and then we just continue with the same mess, or they do better. Okay. And logically speaking, um, the choice is obvious. Whether you want to take that risk and leave this messy government behind, or take the risk of going with a new government that you really don't know whether they're going to do better or do worse. Okay, um, before we continue, now in the studio we have Shore Omoyele. He's the founder of the Sahara <laughs> Reporters. So, yeah, magic, right? <laughs> okay, so um, I wanted to jump into the conversation. Already we're talking about the postponement and we've looked, about, we've looked at the influence social media seems to be having. And um, like you probably just heard, the Jaffet, rationale behind the uh -huh. reasoning of and the And Jaffet believes, you know, change is better than anything. It's better than the status quo. We are not saying change is going to be for better, but it has to be better than the status quo. But not everybody agrees with that. Because looking at change, now, the second party that seems to have the strongest support is APC. That's, you know, we have to be frank about that. But people say the presidential candidate of that party has once been head of state. That's during the military era. And his regime was tainted with, you know, killings, well, rumors of killings for crimes that were not capital, so capital um, punishment. So, no, we didn't, he also didn't follow the constitution. Why should we believe in him now? Well, I don't want to justify the killing that was done in 1983 with the killings that have been done now. Uh, but if you look at it, if you put it on a scale, uh, the Gulag Jonathan government has actually killed more people, uh, according even to Amnesty International. There was a time the military have they raided. Killed more people. Yes, in Baga or alone. Boko Haram has killed. No, no, more in Baga alone. Just listen to me. This is verifiable. Uh, in Baga alone, the military, before Boko Haram took over Baga again, was accused of mass killings. 
right? Yes. If, you want to, if you take the killings of unemployed youths by the immigration recruitment itself, that was killing by negligence. That if that happened in any country uh, where there is uh, any form of, of modicum of government, people will be held accountable for homicide, for inviting people to a stadium, to get jobs that don't exist. You took money from them. That is killing. That is like mass murder of people. Uh, this is as bad as religious leaders who killed in 1978 by giving people what they call Kool-Aid to drink. So would you say that the man who gave Kool-Aid did not kill? So, but I'm not trying to justify that. What we have now reached is a point where people want change. And I've said it. People don't even care at this time what the change will lead them to. But the important thing about democracy is that you can actually elect a buffoon yeah. if that's what you want. They did it in the U.S. There was for eight years, they had George Bush. You can't have it worse than that. Mm -hmm. And then that brought about Obama. So it's about having that confidence in the democratic process. And this will carry more people along if they can vote for someone that they want. And it is obvious that the government today does not want to go for election. We've been saying this since October last year on our page is that good Lord Jonathan is mortally afraid to contest even against himself because he knows he will lose. There's no question about it. That's why they are moving around the goalposts, as they say, in soccer. All right. Um, I, I think it, it might be risky for us to make you know, pronouncements like that. But let me ask you this. Don't be afraid. What do Look, you you know, part of the problem is that the <laughs> media is too timid. And we're about to ask a question you know, about yes. the media, aren't we? Exactly. <laughs> well, not necessarily. What exactly do you foresee March 28th and April 11th? Do you really think that this country can afford and achieve a free and a credible election in the very sense of it? Well, it is obvious at this point that a free, fair and credible election has been interfered with. Because you have the referee of the game who is now being shoved around mm -hmm. by security agents. Mm -hmm. You know, if you go to a soccer game and the security agents take over the pitch, you can't call that soccer game anymore, right? It's because the referee is no longer in charge. So, but I think people are determined, and that's what you saw. They wanted to push Nigerians into some form of premeditated violence yes. by doing what it did the last few days. And people are very calm and smart and say, okay, yeah, we'll wait for a few more days, you know. You don't want us to have, you know, Valentine, where we'll go for the Ides of March, or, you know, as they call it. And somebody is going to get in trouble for it, but I imagine it's the guys in Abuja. But again, I want to make that point okay. about you guys in the media. Don't be afraid to speak the mind of people. Otherwise, you are going to lose your place in society. That's why social media has become the prime today. It's because all of you are too obsessed with your professionalism that you don't want to speak the truth. All right. Okay. Now, yes. from, from the look of things now, I'll, I'll get back to you. We from barely the look of, have time because yeah, from, we from, have from, to From the look up. of things now, I mean, the government has been painted as a devil. INEC has been painted as a confused. And the masses are also being misled now, so to speak. Who we, have just, the masses? we have just the media. The masses okay. is not how being misled. Media? That's not, that's not how, true. How can I, want, I want to clarify this. I want okay. to the masses and are not being misled. Words. The masses are very clear about what they want. And, and that's why we are discussing this. They want change. They want to have credible elections. They want to have free elections. Hmm. And it is the government that is not making that happen. It is the media that is still afraid to call it the way it is. Okay, All Buki. Right. Buki wants me, to say something. Finally, briefly, in, no. first, briefly. INEC is the Independent <laughs> National Electoral Commission. Emphasis Federal government independent. should allow them to do be their independent. Job. All Number right. two, please, Buki. is change is coming. If change is coming, what is, their, what is the thing oh, that Buki, they want I'm to sorry. do we differently? We can't take any more. Jaffet, you know, your last, we have to look at that. finally, very few <laughs> words, please. Your final words. Do we still have you? Independent. Let's do away with this political interference. Yes. Okay. I like that. And thank you so much all for being a part of the program. Thank you, Shuwere, for thank coming. You. Thank, thank you, you Buki. And of course, don't forget, the conversation <laughs> continues yes, online. Tweet at us at TVC Trends. And of course, let's know what you're talking about subsequently. Bye for now. Yeah. Thank you.